So when I was in Thailand back in 2013, and this was right before I was gonna start drama school, and one night with a friend of mine, when we were in Thailand, we wanted to do mushrooms. I'd never done mushrooms before. And I was really excited to do mushrooms because I, I, I never knew anything about the experience of hallucinating or what have you. So I was kind of nervous, but at the same time, I couldn't wait to you know sort of get started. Got a, a boat out to this island in Koh Phan Yang, it's off Thailand, called Eden, I think the island is. And we met a shaman there and she blended us up this intense cocktail of mushrooms. Talking about mushrooms, and it sounds like I don't really know what I'm talking about. Well, then that would be the truth. We drank these mushroom sh shakes and then we got a boat back to the main island. And then a whole other world opened up to me and I started tripping absolute balls and so did my friend. But the funny thing is, we both saw the same things as each other. We both visualized every hallucination I had, he had also. There was this symbiosis, synchronicity between the two of us, which was super cool and super exciting. And there was a great trust between us there. So it was a really amazing trip and gave me the sense that there's so much more than what I just see and observe in this world. And you know, that was one of the best times ever, is the first time I tripped on mushrooms. But why I'm making this video today and why that was one of the most significant times in my life, not only because I enjoyed it so much. What I left that trip on mushrooms was, and on the darker side, when I was coming down off the mushrooms and the visuals had worn off and the hallucinations had worn off and then it became a, a, a mental come down. And I had a, a micro ego death, if you want to call it. And the idea came into my head that was, Fergus, you have never given anything in your life 100%, anything that you enjoy doing. And it was the realest feeling and intuition about myself that I've ever had. And it just, it dawned on me so hard and heavy that I went, I woke up that more the next morning and I was like, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna pick a craft, which was then I was gonna go to drama school and I'm gonna give it a hundred percent. I'm gonna work harder than anybody I know. And that was, that was the realest thing to me. You know, that was the realest thing I could think of. And so that's what I've done, you know, the past five and a half years now. And then in tandem with that idea, I'd also read Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell and I'd stumbled across this 10,000 hours. And I worked out how long it would take me to do the 10,000 hours in my traveling craft, which was acting. But I also had done some acting when I was younger or whatever. So I knew how long it would take. And so that was my goal. But since that epiphany that I had, my whole life has changed since then. And what I mean by that is, I, this journey, the road to mastery, has been an incredibly lonely journey. So anybody who's watching this video now, who's a bit younger than me, who's about to partake on the voyage, on the road to mastery, I want to let you know that this will be the loneliest period of your life because to want to do something at 100%, it means huge amount of time in your room alone practicing really boring things time and time again because that's what your intuition tells you and it will also push you to the point where you go i could learn faster on my own i need to get out of here and and then you start slowly pushing people away because you need that time alone to study your craft and it's also a very lonely time because when you endeavor on that 100% max out on the thing that you want to do, you start to see the world from that perspective where if it isn't the fastest route to it, or if something is getting in your way, you will discard that thing. And when I say that, that means I've discarded so much nonsense from my life and so much of the pleasures I love from my life you know, I used to have a, quite a quite the social life. I used to be quite a popular guy. And basically, I had to start telling people I'm not going to go out anymore. I stopped drinking. I stopped smoking. 
I stopped partying basically just so I could get really good at this thing, you know, and, 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 and I start going to stop going to events. I realized what didn't work for me in the craft and the traditional route I realized when I was going down this acting path wasn't going to work for me, didn't suit who I was. And also I knew that if I went down the traditional route, I'd spend too much time politicking. And to be honest, I just said, really not want to do that. I just wanted to work on a craft and get really good at what I wanted to do. And that's lonely. That's lonely as fuck. And what you realize as well is many people pursuing the same craft to you aren't pursuing it with the same depth that you are. Not saying that I'm really deep or anything, but they are doing it for other reasons than they just want to be really good or master an area. I wanted to master an area, but some people do it because they want the validation of getting good at something or being an actor or they want the attention or they want the lifestyle that comes with that. And I didn't want any of that. All I wanted to be and still now is as good as I possibly can be. And, and I continue to make those sacrifices. And honestly, it, it is a very lonely thing to do. And I have been very lonely within the journey of that mastery. And I knew it was the only way that I could do it to, to, to sort of say, no, I'm gonna leave now and I'm gonna go back home and I'm gonna work on my stuff. And time and time again, I've met people that I really get on with, but then I, you know, especially in the field that I'm in, and, but you realize that they don't have the same drive to get good and the same drive to make stuff that you do. And you can't hang around with that because they just want to chill out and have fun and maybe talk about acting and talk about the crap but not actually do it. And so then, you know, you go back to your room again and you're alone again because you know that that is a, like, because they don't have the same drive as you do, it will, it will lag on your, your development. And that's kind of a dark side to it, but, a, a reality of it. It's also lonely and difficult because obviously when you start to follow your intuition totally as I have, you will, the traditional roots don't make sense to you because you're doing all this thinking to get as good as possible. And maybe they just didn't suit me just the way I'm built. But as you start to develop in your mastery, as you start to develop the great skills that you're developing, you see the errors in everything. You see the errors in the teaching you're getting. You're going, I can't listen to this guy anymore. And the other flip side of that was, I wish I, I, I started this in, you know, whilst it has caused, you know, a sort of a loneliness and a sadness within me, it's also been the greatest joy in my life to know that I, I'm doing, I'm on my path and have my vocation. And now because I spent so much hours and time thinking about and getting good at it, I know that the path isn't straight and that I've had to deviate and do my own thing constantly because I knew the traditional route wouldn't work for me. So, you know, for example, I didn't really want to do plays because I knew if I was doing plays, I'd only be getting smaller roles and small productions in productions that I didn't really want to do in Ireland and I wouldn't really get that time on stage or screen if I pursued that route but in Ireland uh, going the play route is the way to sort of make your way up traditionally make your way up the uh, ladder as as an actor and I said no to that and a lot of people said you know what, what the fuck are you doing you're, you're you're not you're not working you're not getting the credits you need uh, but then I went off on a different route and I, I focused on the filmmaking because I knew I could, I could get the amount of screen time I needed by myself and the people I work with by making my own work. I get more screen time and more play time by doing that than waiting for the job. And that has been a very difficult choice for me to make, uh, especially when I spent so long training and getting good in the training and then to go off and make my own work and, and, and learn the craft of filmmaking, which is, which is obviously a complicated craft, to support my skill set and sacrifice more time and more potential credits that would help me go up the ladder. But now 
those choices that I made and that intuition I had on those things are starting to come around. And because of the short films I've made have given me opportunity. And it, I have not done the traditional route at all, but I have followed the one thing that I knew that was most important was my inner intuition that would guide me to mastery, even though the external world wouldn't validate me. I knew I had to follow my own thing. And I think that is actually part of the process of mastery is going, well, there's roadblocks here in the traditional consensus. I don't want to compete with this. I'm going to have to segue and, and go my other way because this isn't going to work for me. Well, what I feel about the whole approach to mastery, you think it's just one thing you're learning like acting, but it's many different things. Because if you focused on the one thing and you, you couldn't turn at a difficult point in the road, you wouldn't be able to accelerate that learning, you know? And, and I didn't know that until I gave myself the driving force of this is 100% no matter what, no matter what happens, Fergus, you're going all the way 100%. So is there any younger guys watching this who are, who are about to partake on the voyage of mastery and you're like, oh, I don't know how the fuck I'm gonna work this out. You, you've gotta be willing to turn at any point and that's actually part of the mastery process. So I hope you don't think that I have all the answers because especially with this channel, I try never to make it out like I have the answers because I struggle terribly with the same things all of us do. But, you know, uh, I'm really trying to find my way. And this, this, this concept of on the road to mastery was, was, was a stepping stone to that. So I hope, hope you guys can enjoy the road a little bit more than maybe I had and know that it, that it is a lonely one. Cool. Catch you guys in the next one.